cosmic rays were discovered over a hundred years ago and uh, we still don't know where they come from, how they are accelerated. Uh, it's a wide open question, probably one of the oldest questions in astronomy. And we may not have solved the whole problem, but we have identified at least one cosmic ray accelerator. We've been able for the first time to pinpoint uh, a likely source of the high energy neutrinos and the high energy cosmic rays that fill the universe. Uh, the object uh, is a blazar, which is a kind of uh, galaxy with a, a massive black hole at the center that's, that's busy devouring uh, matter and sending out jets of, of particles along its axis. So what happened is that IceCube detected a very high energy neutrino coming some, somewhere in the cosmos. Within less than one minute, we reconstructed where it came from and then sent a telegram to all the other telescopes. What we saw was that this particular blazar was in a highly active state by a number of independent instruments. And that includes measurements by the Fermi telescope in, in space and by high energy gamma ray telescopes like uh, the MAGIC telescope. It's not really an ice cube discovery. It's essential that several telescopes collaborated to make this discovery. No one telescope could have done this by themselves. Gamma rays and neutrinos are very closely related. Um, they, whenever you produce, you accelerate particles to very high energies, you produce both neutrinos and gamma rays. So this coincidence that we see both here from the same direction really makes us sure that now we have pinpointed actually the, the source of, of this neutrino. In some sense, whenever we do neutrino astronomy, we also do multi-messenger astronomy. Once we had this connection between the high energy alert event and the blazar, uh, we wanted to go and back and see if we had uh, evidence of neutrinos coming from this object before. And what we found is that uh, in a period of a few months, uh, there was an excess of uh, neutrinos from exactly this spot in the sky. It's not that there was one neutrino event that was um, seen together with lots of gamma rays coming from the source, or that this place historically has had a time where there were neutrino excesses, but the combination of those two and the fact that they come from the same place, that's what's very significant about this discovery. The alert we issued on September 22nd of last year uh, received quite a bit of follow-up. I think in total we had uh, roughly 18 reported follow-ups from it, and I would say a little more than half of them actually made a detection. The other observatories out there span the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from radio observations all the way through optical telescopes, all the way up into the very highest energies, like the Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope looks at you know, gamma rays that are in the, you know, up to a few GeV, and then even we have these uh, telescopes such as uh, MAGIC that are these Erzsherenkov telescopes that go up to hundreds of GeV in energy. They allow us to get a full picture of what's happening within these sources if we're able to detect one. The really fantastic thing about what's happened is, is that it demonstrates what IceCube was built to do. IceCube was built to launch the, the field of neutrino astronomy. Until a few years ago, we did not know if these neutrinos would be detectable and at what level. The big breakthrough was the discovery five years ago of the diffuse flocks of extraterrestrial high energy neutrinos by ice cube, of course. Unfortunately, these neutrinos are rare. And to go one step further, we needed to do something more. What we did was to design an automatic real-time alert system, enabling us to alert our partners in the astronomical observatories to look for objects pointed to by high-energy neutrinos. And this is how we succeeded finally on the 10th alert. The National Science Foundation, some 15 years ago, 
decided that they were going to do, to take the gamble of building this detector uh, by transforming a cubic kilometer of natural ice in Antarctica under the South Pole into a particle detector. And so this was a gamble. There's no guarantee that we would see cosmic neutrinos. And so there was no guarantee that when we saw them, we would be able to identify their sources. And so the surprising result is, here we are, and the gamble paid off on both counts.